Imagine a new kind of investing, a potentially life-changing way to invest that honors biblical principles, the kind of principles that you and I grew up with. Since 1994, Timothy Plan has made biblically responsible investing possible, offering mutual funds and ETFs that are filtered for biblical principles. Don't compromise your values. Invest with Timothy Plan. Ask your financial advisor or call Timothy Plan at 1-800-TIM-PLAN. Again, that's 1-800-846-7526 and discover what it means to be a biblically responsible investor. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. Read carefully before investing. Mutual funds distributed by Timothy Partners, LTD, and ETFs distributed by Foresight Fund Services, LLC. As a paid testimonial, there is no guarantee of future performance, and each experience will differ. Hey there, welcome to the Memo Pod. Great to have you with us. The email address, as always, is peterpeterheck.com. Peter at peterheck.com. Would love to hear from you. Appreciate all of you that are uh, downloading this Memo Pod podcast and listening to it. Appreciate all of you that join us uh, via YouTube here. You can always access that um, and in the, or archived and all of that. So if you want to go back and look, I haven't, I, I, one of my difficult, one of the difficult things is I don't have a lot of extra time. We don't have very big staff that works on this kind of stuff. So I feel like the descriptions of the things that I talk about, I try to put them in the title line. So they're not like catchy titles. I noticed that like a lot of podcasts, Sometimes they're numbered, but there's always like a catchy name. Maybe not a lot of podcasts, just some of them. And I just don't have that. And maybe that's something that needs to change. Maybe I need to get hipper. I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'm going to let you know that what I'm going to start off talking about today um, is a uh, is a pet peeve of mine. And it's probably something that's going to rub some of you the wrong way. Yeah, it's political in nature, but it's more than political. In fact, I'm going to say that this is what supersedes politics, and for a lot of people who are politics-obsessed, which is the majority of our culture, it's really, really going to, um, it's really going to bother you. And I am aware of the fact that there are those of you who agree with me religiously and um, uh, philosophically and politically on, on a host of issues, you are not going to like this. And you are not going to like the suggestion or the implication that I'm making that maybe one of the reasons you recoil at this is because politics is too important to you. That politics has superseded, or even if it hasn't superseded, it has worked its way up to the point of equality with your principles. To me, and by the way, just know that me saying this, this is a new me. Um, because I always believed that principles and politics were amalgamated. They were the same thing. I don't believe that anymore. I think that many times politics is a challenge to our principles, that you need to make sure that your politics are subservient to your, your principles. And when you get to the point where your principles and your politics always coincide, what that will indicate is that your principles are malleable that your principles are adjustable, that your principles are chameleon. And whatever you want your politics to be, your principles will go along with them. Uh, And when people don't operate like that, when people are uh, principles first, which means that they will reject uh, certain political movements, political causes, political parties, if they conflict with their principles, then those people who aren't like that are going to get really, really bothered. And they're going to say, what what are you saying? I'm not a good Christian. Actually, I never said that. I never said, you saying my principles aren't strong enough? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that my principles dictate my behavior and they're going to dictate what I do politically. And you attempting to shame me politically, uh, that's not going to fly. It's not going to, it's not going to work. By the way, I keep trying to whack this gnat you're probably going to see fly up in front of the camera. It's really annoying. And he's lived out here in this part of our studio. He's lived out here for weeks now. And I swear it's the same gnat. It's not like it's it's a second generation. Or it's not like it's it's like uh, there's more than one of them. It's just the same gnat. I should come up with a name. 
But anyway, I feel like maybe I'm talking in circles. I don't know if I'm talking in circles. I hope I'm making sense in what I'm saying. I am just aware that what I'm about to do is going to really, really annoy some of you. Because I'm going to come to the defense of somebody who right now is taking uh, massive criticism. Massive criticism from people who have always pretended and have always said that they're on her side. That, yeah, she's awesome. She's great. But the moment her principles go against those people's politics, then those people say, well, your principle, ah, you, you, this is terrible. This is awful. You're a, you're a terrible person. And yes, that's what they're saying. And to me, it's an indication of the danger and the threat of political uh, idolatry. Uh, and I was a political idolater. I was. And don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, I, those were all phrases that I used to try to shame people whose principles were telling them, I can't do this. When people said M Mitt Romney is a Mormon and Mormons and Christians, they have similar values uh, on, on like cultural things. They do. Um, but there's something very alarming about an individual who can accept and believe without evidence many of the fantastic teachings, and by fantastic I mean incredible, not credible teachings of the Mormon church. There's something that goes haywire there, and I'm not comfortable with that. I don't want the leader of my country, and so they decided not to vote for Mitt Romney, and uh, I was right there saying, how can you do that? He's clearly better than Barack Obama. How can you, your principles are going to keep you from voting for Mitt Romney? So here's what happened. In case you don't know what happened, uh, let me take you back to 2003. In 2003, there was a 15-year-old girl in California. Her name was Lila Rose. And Lila Rose started an organization. She named the organization, I, b I believe it started off, off of this name, Live Action was the name of it. It was her and a group of pro-life friends that went around and did pro-life presentations in places. It kind of it spoke to me because that's kind of how I got my start. I would go around and do, uh, it wasn't pro-life, although pro-life was part of it, but it was, um, I, I would go to churches and do presentations on the godly heritage of the country. And that's where the speaking career took off. It's where the, the radio show career took off and all of that. So in, in that way, although Lila Rose has obviously been extraordinarily successful in what she's done, uh, but in that way, I kind of had the same kind of start that she did. They would go around and they would do these presentations, pro-life presentations. And then three years later, she is uh, at college, I believe it was UCLA, and she turns her small cause into a nonpartisan and a nonprofit organization called Live Action. Uh, and I do want to stress again, this pro-life organization that she started, it was always nonpartisan. That's why it was a nonprofit, because it was not promoting one political party over another. Now, is there a political party that has been committed to the cause of death in the womb for quite some time? Absolutely. But the point is that not all Democrat politicians were pro-death. Just like not all Republican politicians were pro-life. Yeah, I'm still trying to kill it. Oh, I can't get it. He keeps evading me. And I don't, I don't want to whack at it because I don't want to knock the stuff off here. Sorry, that's the gnat again. But since Lila Rose did that, founded that organization as a 15-year-old and then, and then made it a nonprofit, nonpartisan nonprofit at 18, Live Action has become the premier pro-life group in America. And one of the things that our critics and complainers are now saying is it's wildly successful. They have these huge galas and all of these awards banquets and they have uh, all of these um, channels and they put these videos out and Lila Rose makes a nice salary uh, now because of it, although living in California, <laughs> it'd be a lot different if you were making that salary living where I live. Um, and living in California, it's a little different and obviously she has travel and all of those things that come with a big uh, organization, which, which live action is. But anyway, all of that's a, a peripheral issue. Um, 
same cause, same purpose as it was from the beginning. Speak truth on behalf of unborn babies. Advocate for those who have no voice. Now, again, let me say this again. Is it true that live action and Lila Rose have done more condemnation of Democrat Party policies? Have done more condemnation of Democrat politicians' conduct than Republican? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And why would that be? Not because it's a partisan organization. No, because one political party, the Democrat Party, has an organizational commitment to promoting abortion as a form of birth control up until the moment of birth. So, of course, an organization like Live Action is going to condemn virtually everything that comes out of the Democrat Party and virtually every politician who runs under the banner of the Democrat Party because they're wrong on that issue that Live Action centers around. They're a single-issue organization. The Republican Party does not have that organizational commitment. In fact, the Republican Party has been the vehicle through which pro-lifers have been able to accomplish things. Doesn't mean every Republican is pro-life, and that's the key. Lila Rose and, and Live Action, they have never attempted to portray themselves as such, and they have never been Republican Party operatives. Now, the Democrats may complain that that's what they are, but that's only because the Democrats are so useless on the issue of protecting life in the womb, which is what live action cares about. If the Republican Party defends life, then live action will stand with them, just like if the Democrat Party did, but they don't. If the Republican Party becomes a threat to life in the womb, then live action is going to oppose them. That's the nature of who they are and what they're about. It is a, that's, those are their principles. And that's the point. This is about principle. Uh, this week, this week, live action. Uh, the thing is that people say that I've got these principles, but people call bull on it all the time. No, you're really just a Republican uh, uh, operative. That's all this is. That's all this organization is. It's a front. You're you caring about life in the womb. This is really about uh, money for yourself and money for electing Republicans. That's what this is. Well, Lila Rose showed her own character, the integrity of her organization, because what did she do this last week? She rightly and righteously called out and denounced the Trump Vance Republican presidential ticket because they betrayed the pro-life cause. I'm going to read you the full tweet of, of Lila Rose. This is what she wrote. Trump Vance have recently said, colon, that Trump would veto a national ban on abortion. Yes, they said that. That Donald Trump, if given a national federal ban on abortion, Donald Trump would veto it. Now, let me just ask a question. Does a pro-life president pledge to veto a ban on abortion? I'm just asking the question. I'm not asking, is it good politics? Is it something that you have to say to get elected? That's not what I'm asking. Would a pro-life president pledge to veto a national ban on abortion? No. No. A, a, a politician who is willing to at times support life and at other times not, that's who would agree to such a thing. I, I, that's not controversial, right? We understand that if Donald Trump is pledging, I will veto a ban, a federal ban on abortion, that's not what a pro-life president would do. That is what a middle-of-the-road-on-the-issue politician would do. He is going to do some things that are good for the cause of life, but he's not going to go too far in his mind. Okay, so there you go. Now go back to what I said from the beginning about what live action is. Live action is an organization that is committed to defending life in the womb. And when the Republican Party does that, they will stand with the Republican Party. When the Republican Party is a threat to that, they will stand athwart and against the Republican Party. So there is no question what Lila Rose and live action should be doing in this situation. This is not a statement a pro-life president would ever make. She wasn't done. They, Trump Vance, support access to abortion pills. 
That's 60% of all abortions. And that number is rising. Ever since the ban, uh, uh, sorry, ever since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, the abortion pill has become the primary method by which children are murdered in America and women are endangered who take these pills. I wrote a column uh, that, that still just uh, reverberates in my conscience about a young woman who called a pregnancy resource center because Planned Parenthood wouldn't talk to her. Planned Parenthood had given her the abortion pill. She took it. She had no idea what it was going to do. She ended up delivering her baby, dead baby, into the toilet. And she called the PRC, the Pregnancy Resource Center, not knowing what to do. Do I flush it? This is her baby. So the abortion pill is a serious danger to the cause of life and to unborn babies around America. And Donald Trump and, and uh, Vance, I blanked on his name there for a second, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have said, yeah, we support access to the abortion pill. Is that something a pro-life president would say? Uh, Lila Rose wrote, they think it's California's right to permit abortion up until the moment of birth. Well, yeah, it's California. They can do what they want. It's their right. Well, what about the 14th Amendment? What about the 5th Amendment? That the government has an obligation to preserve and protect the life of its citizens. And that no state has the authority to deprive life of a citizen. I mean, where do we get this idea that it's California's right to permit murder? I don't, I don't understand that philosophy. But Lila Rose goes on and says, that same ticket that thinks it's California's right because they take a state's rights position, okay, then why do they turn around when Arizona bans most all abortion and say Arizona's gone too far? Or Florida. Florida's ban, six-week ban, that's too much. And maybe the federal government needs to take action. What? Then you don't believe in states' rights. Is that the kind of, of posturing that a pro-life president, one committed to pro-life causes, would take? Of course not. So what would you expect a group like, like Live Action and Lila Rose, what, what do you expect that they would do? Right, they would call it out. And they would say this isn't right, which is exactly what Lila Rose went on to do. She said, due to their increasingly pro-abortion position, Trump Vance is stretching the lesser of two evils voting strategy to an untenable position. Without some indication that they will work to make our nation a safer place for pre-born children, they are making it impossible for pro-life voters to support them. Being less passionate about killing babies than Harris and Walls is not enough. You know who it's not enough to? It's not enough to people whose principles dictate such. Now, people who are governed by politics first, and all that matters is power... Therefore, whoever is better than the other one, that's who you vote for. It's, it's always pragmatic. Whoever is better than the other one, even if it's only on one tiny little issue, that makes them better, so that's who you vote for. Because all that ultimately matters is power. The people that operate in that way do not understand and do not appreciate people who operate based on principle. And that's what Lila Rose is doing. And because of that, and proving that political idolatry is exceptionally ugly, you should see some of the things that are being said about Lila Rose. Actually, you shouldn't see it. It's disgusting. By people who have been her allies and her promoters, and oh, she's great, and look at what this organization's doing, as long as they were promoting the Republican Party over the Democrat Party. Then Lila Rose is great. But the moment Lila Rose doesn't change her position, but acknowledges that the Republican presidential ticket has abandoned pro-lifers, she simply points out, that isn't going to fly. Now all of these other people jump all over who used to be her big supporters. What, what do you mean? What, life, the issue of life is the most important thing to you? 
Uh, yeah. That's what this movement has always been about. That's what her cause has always been. Calling Lila Rose a grifter? Man, she stands to lose incredible amounts of money to her organization by going against the bullies in the Republican Party. She's been slammed as a sellout, self-righteous, a grifter, all of it. So let me simply say this in defense of Lila Rose. First of all, if you're embarrassed at the anti-life stances that Trump and Vance are taking, I get it. But don't direct your anger at Lila Rose for simply pointing it out. Direct your anger at the people who are screwing it all up. The people who, Trump, Vance, who softened the language against abortion in the Republican platform. And the people who have made these pledges, who say they support access to the abortion pill. How do you expect a pro-lifer to, in good conscience, go out and vote for you if that issue is really a matter of principle for them? I don't know how you expect that. That isn't Lila Rose's problem. That's Trump Vance. That's their problem. Lila is not damaging, and this is what I've seen. Oh, you're hurting Trump's chances of winning the presidency. No. She's pointing out pro-lifers are not going to be able to support somebody who's promoting the abortion pill. Why would a pro-lifer ever do that? It's not Lila Rose that's damaging Donald Trump's chances of winning the presidency. It's Donald Trump that is damaging his own chances of winning the presidency by taking absurd, wrong-headed, stupid positions on the issue of life. Now, do I think that a pro-life American can make a pragmatic argument? Well, sure, I, it's fine to say. Well, pragmatism means we have to vote for Donald Trump. And you can make the lesser of the two evils argument if you want to. And here's what you can do. You can point out, and, and you should if this is your conviction, you can point out that, that Donald Trump, if he's in office, he may be promoting the abortion pill, but he also will be pardoning those grandmas and grandpas who got arrested by the Biden administration for praying outside of an abortion clinic. Donald Trump will pardon them. I don't know that he actually will, but you can make that argument. You can say that that's what he would do. And we certainly know that Kamala Harris would not. So you can make that argument. You can say if Donald Trump's in the presidency, he controls the regulative state. And that's a lot better for, for unborn babies and our cause than if Kamala Harris was in charge of the regulative state. Okay. All of that is reasonable. All of it makes reasonable sense. I think there's a case that you can make for those things, but attacking the most devoted pro-lifers and most devoted pro-life workers for, for their principles that they have always had and they have always articulated, refusing to acknowledge and understand that some people who have their first allegiance to God, don't want to look at God and say, God, I know I'm supporting evil with my, vo with my vote. I know that. I know the abortion pill is evil. And I know that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance support access to the abortion pill. I know that in voting for that, I'm voting for something, consciously voting for something that is evil, God. But I've got this all figured out. I've got this all figured out from a strategic standpoint, God. If we get him in there, then he'll make the right moves in the regulative state. He'll appoint the right judges. So yeah, we'll be promoting something evil, but there's a grander strategy here, God, and you need to see through it. You just don't think complex enough. There's a lot of folks that don't want to say that to the God of the universe. Instead, they want to say, God... I know what you abhor. I know what is wrong. I know what you have said is wrong. I know what is evil, and I won't be party to it. I am not going to support consciously with my money, with my voice, or with my vote something that I know is wrong. Instead, I'm going to be obedient to you. And I'm going to trust that if I am obedient to you, that you'll handle the consequences and I need not fear. 
um, telling me that those people are stupid or evil, that isn't going to fly here. And the folks who are saying that, I think partially, there's a group of them, their consciences are, are pricked because they know that that position is the right position, but they're afraid to do it because it seems like they're turning over our country to the godless. By being obedient and being faithful to honoring what God honors and hating what God hates, you're worried about what's going to happen. Okay, what's going to happen to what? To the country? Then what is your first love? Then what is your primary concern? I think that's the issue that's at play here. I do. I, do I still think that, that you can, if, if you're in good conscience, you can cast a vote? Uh, okay. All right. But I agree with Lila Rose. If the justification has been, well, the most important issue is the issue of life. And Kamala Harris is dead wrong on it and Donald Trump's right on it. You can't say that anymore. They're both wrong on the issue. You want to say that Donald Trump is wrong about less or is less committed to the evil? Okay. But do you feel good about that? Uh, maybe you do. And again, I, the point of this isn't so much to persuade you to see things as somebody who's, who's trying to honor God and, and, and hold those convictions. That's, I'm stating a case. I'm stating a defense of Lila Rose and a defense of, of myself on these issues that I am quite comfortable making. I just hope those that are choosing the opposite are making that decision based on principle. Because in the end, um, look, if there wasn't a God, if God did not exist, then, uh, then, I, then it's true that power is more important than principle. You remember what Chairman Mao said of China, that justice is determined by the person who stands on the right side of the gun. If I hold the gun, I decide what's right and wrong. If you hold the gun, you decide what's right and wrong. Power is all that matters if there is no God. But if there is a God, if God does exist, then what matters isn't who holds the gun. What matters is what is right. And here's where I'm coming from. There is a God. And I am more than happy to stand with anyone who understands that in the end, listen, right always beats might. Oh, but look at what we could do if we had this position. Look at what we could do if we had this power. Or look what this group would do if they had this position. Look what this group would do if they had this power. Mm-hmm. Choosing right is better in the end than having power. That's a conviction. So I say Godspeed to Lila Rose, and she's getting obliterated right now, and I can't even imagine, I mean, I can, a, a little micro, I, I can understand a little bit of what that's like, uh, given things that have happened in, in the past for me. But I'm, I'm sure she's feeling incredible pressure uh, from donors and all sorts of people, all kinds of idle threats and not idle threats that are appearing there online. But uh, I say thank you to Lila Rose and Godspeed. Your thoughts always welcome, Peter PeterPeterHeg.com. That is Peter at PeterHeg.com. I would love to hear from you. Got something good coming up for you if you are a paid subscriber in the second half. Something good that I don't think you're going to want to miss. If you're a free subscriber, here's your chance. You can right now click on the link and you can, the, the subscribe link, and you can up, if you're getting a free subscription, you can up to a paid one, just $100 for the whole year, or you can do the $10 a month. It's a little bit more per month, uh, but then you can, of course, stop at any time. You can just withdraw, but give us a shot. I think this community might do something for you. Maybe, maybe. I'll tell you one thing it'll do for you. It'll let you jump into the second half of this week's memo pod, which is coming up right after this. The Memo with Peter Heck. Please.
Please patronize and thank all the sponsors of the Heck Podcast, including McGonagall's Buick GMC, Terrell's Auto Service, Norris Insurance, Stevens Machine, Creative Financial Center, Indiana Right to Life, Trigreen Tractor, The Indiana Family Institute, Hartman Family Farms, Liberty Financial Group, The Wyman Group, and J. Watson Creations.